Hey, friendly skeptic. This is the uh, this is the practitioner here. Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, math minor, magician, parapsych researcher, uh, technical agnostic and forty and skeptic. Um, yeah, you know, um, I've actually always uh, particularly uh, love uh, love the uh, you know the way that Randy's challenge has always worked and the like. Um, there have, however, been two slight flaws. Um, they're only very slight, but they could um. They could perhaps be one of the biggest reasons as to why we've never actually been able to get a uh, a clear um, a clear answer one way or the other as to why uh, as to whether or not uh, parasitic phenomena actually exist or not. Um, you know, uh, one of the biggest uh, issues which I've had um, was I emailed I emailed Randy about that uh, uh, I emailed Randy about this about a year ago. Um, uh, up until about um, now, mind you, of course, this was I don't know if this has changed in the past year, but. Um, up until uh, up until about a year ago, at least when I read when I wrote the emails, um, the bulk. Now note that I say the bulk of the experiments that have been conducted. Um, well, actually, no. To the best of my knowledge, practically every experiment that the Randy Challenge has conducted has either been done by the James Randy Educational Foundation or by one of the skeptical affiliates, generally the Center for Inquiry or or one of the local uh, skeptics groups in the local um, in the area uh, which the person lives. Now the problem with this, and this is the uh, and. Um, Actually, this is a problem which plagues uh, proponent parapsychology too, uh, which I don't and I don't think has been adequately controlled for, um, is the possibility of experimenter bias. Um, and and no, um, when I mean experimenter bias, I want to be perfectly clear what I'm talking about here. Um, uh, the thing, of course, is those that uh, uh, how do I phrase this appropriately? Um, there have been claims. Uh, uh, it's a very minor claim that's uh, that's uh, that's been thrown out there on occasion. But some proponents have claimed that uh, that, J that James Randi's uh, skeptical vibrations, you know, like his skepticism, causes negative vibrations which hamper their psychic capability. Um, so James Randi says, "Fine, I won't attend the test and know the date or time to avoid this." There is, however, a slight flaw in him doing that. You see, the problem is is that even if hypothetically, um, even if he's been able to remove himself from the situation. Uh, and dealing with a place that both people trust, um, even when he's not there, there is always still a skeptic present. Uh, you know, if, if it's a, being a test by a skeptical organization, uh, the person is still being tested with skeptics present, and they know they are being tested with skeptics present. So, um, the uh, basically experimenter bias for the uh, just for the definition is um, the wish of a subject to confirm the experimenter's results. Um, there are plenty of instances in terms of a uh, um, uh, parasite uh, case with this. And I've also um, I've actually posted um, some links to a couple of sites on this uh, uh, on experimenter side effect final data. Uh, if you want to go take a look at my videos, uh, uh, just uh, type in experimenter side effect in uh, in my uh, you know go click my username, type in experimenter side effect, and watch the videos there. I've re I've referenced to a few sources of uh, of obscure studies which actually did take this into account. Um, but anyway, bottom line is that uh, both uh, proponent research is equally, uh, 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 you know, uh, plagued to this fraud, flaw because of the fact that the um, proponents will often say, you know, we are we are believers in psi, or we, uh, you know, or we, you know, we expect, uh, you know, statistical significance based on previous experiments. So the subjects go, okay, and from that, uh, you know, and, or and particularly as well, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of proponent research probably gets a large chunk of believers in their subjects or what have you. So they go like, okay. Um, and from that, you know, I mean, who's going to respond to an ESP ad? Uh, you know, more likely a believer is probably going to respond as a subject to one of those ads if they're not, you know, I mean, skeptics are probably not likely going to, uh, you know, reply to try to actually find proof or what have you. Or if they do, you know, they're likely to be in a minority. Anyway, bottom line is, though, is that um, psi proponents, you know, convey their beliefs. Psi skeptics would also convey their beliefs. And uh, from, the, uh, from that, um, what do we have? Well, in the bulk of cases, uh, you know, we do seem to have a, you know, we do seem to have a predictable curve where skeptics uh, obtain chance results, and proponents are either uh, are obtaining significant results, either positive or negative. So the problem with this, uh, and and the problem with this, uh, in my question is, well, you know, if this experimenter bias effect happens, well, how does this plague the one million dollar challenge, and might this actually um, create problems later on, or more specifically, let me refer, let me phrase this in the way which I'm actually. Uh, more thinking about it, um, might this actually uh, present a stumbling block in terms of uh, trying to look at other possible causes for uh, for significant results in proponents' work? You know, uh, other artifacts that have not been looked into. You know, might this hamper reasonable discussion about this? And um, I guess in my book, the answer is yes. And uh, we should be testing for uh, experimenter bias as a possible variable. 
Um, ironically, there have only been uh, two experiments, to the best of my knowledge, which have done this. Um, one of which was published in the 1980. Uh, it was published in the uh, uh, the third uh, the third edition uh, quarterly edition of the Journal of Parapsychology from 1980, and another one of which was done back in Israel uh, about the same time period. Um, the one in uh, the one in the Journal of Parapsychology had a um, had a group of uh, had a group of skeptics and believers, um, you know, set into two different categories. They used the exact same testing format, uh, um, but what they uh, the exact same uh, randomization testing format. But what they did was they took a look and um, you know it was the same standard randomization techniques of the day. And what they did was they took um, what they did was they put uh, they put skeptics and believers, uh, you know, sheep and goats into the concept of prove VSP or disprove VSP. And from that, what they discovered was that um, you know. Uh, 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 from these conditions, um, uh, skeptics in the disprove ESP se uh, section, you know, uh, goats, if you will, did significantly better than uh, goats in the prove ESP section, and vice versa for uh, for uh, sheep. Um, the other uh, the other one was done where a um, a, a couple of skeptical um, a couple of skeptical uh, uh, researchers uh, at the University of Jerusalem or something like that um, did a series of telepathy experiments, but guised, uh, but put them under the disguise of other actual uh, mainstream psychological experiments. You know, they didn't even have ES ESP wasn't even mentioned as a uh, you know as as what they were actually testing for. Now the thing is, under this disguise, they had skeptics, they had uh, uh, you know researchers who were skeptical, true randomization, you know, uh, you know, getting rid of sensory leakage and the like. But what's funny is that despite the fact of the uh, experimenter skepticism. Um, uh, uh, despite the fact of the experimenter skepticism, um, because of the fact that the, su uh, the subjects didn't actually know they were taking part in an ESP test, and they still got statistically significant results in the positive direction. So um, that might indicate, uh, maybe not necessarily that psi exists, but whatever else is going on, um, you know, maybe the maybe if there is another artifact that you know seems to be that is common to all the uh, techniques of randomization, like randomization flaw or something like that, which would allow people to normally um, guess or, or what have you, um, you know, this experimenter bias thing might cause them to perform at less at uh, at less than their normal capacity would be. I'm not saying this is evidence for ESP. I'm saying it's another variable which needs to be removed from the situation before we can actually take a look at whether or not ESP exists. And uh, in my book, the one million dollar challenge as per, um, as is parent uh, proponent research um, that basically all uh, parapsych research both proponent and skeptic and that includes the one million dollar challenge is um, is unfortunately affected by this variable right now and uh, you know it hasn't been well enough controlled for anyway I've presented on uh, my other video and before you say it's unfalsifiable or something like that um, I am a skeptic myself and I have posted on other videos here um, in great detail uh, means of how to test for this uh, and uh, you know I've posted other sources and the like of where you know what the indicators might be for this um, you know how how to test for this uh, how to remove uh, you know how uh, you know how to test for this. How to uh, remove the possibility of experimenter bias. How to test to see if experimenter bias actually even is an is an effect here, or if an experimenter psi effect even exists. Um, you know, like I've uh, you know I've already suggested that. Matter of fact, I already even have a study um, going up for experimenter bias uh, where I've actually even tested this myself. Um, my video will look into the psychic update is the informal uh, re is the informal uh, publication of the results of the study I did. Um, the actual uh, study itself, uh, the full scale paper is now under uh, review at the Journal of Scientific Exploration. So um, if it does uh, turn out to be uh, of any use, um, it'll get published there. If not, hopefully they'll send me some ba uh, back some reviews as to why my experiment got flawed. And I already have a Titan protocol up and ready, uh, waiting, ready to go. Um, you know, for in the event of. Anywho, um, that's uh, that's basically my bit. Um, you know, the one million dollar challenge uh, has not been adequately dealt with in this. Uh, has not adequately dealt with this particular area. Well, that and the lack of peer review on the uh, on the experiments. I mean, um, uh, one prominent example of history is if you watch Arthur C. Clarke's World of Strange Powers pertaining to dowsing. Uh, there was a uh, test for dowsing, which Randy did, um, where he doused, where had people dowsing for both water and metal. The thing is, he lumped the two tests together, which was kind of unfair. They technically should have been technically dowsing for each material. The dowsing for the water was odds of one in a hundred uh, statistical test. The dowsing for metal was at chance levels. He should have kept them separate. It would be like saying penicillin doesn't work because it can treat uh, pe it can pen it can treat one disease but not another. Uh, anyway. So yeah, there was one instance where the ten thousand dollars should have been given up, but um, that's the only uh, error uh, that I've known Randy to do. Um, besides that, you know, it's the only instance of that. Uh, oh, and there was that one time where he uh, uh, left a uh, would have accepted results at chance levels with uh, crystals and uh, kinesiology or something. I'll explain more in the next video. Um, anyway, yeah, more in the next video. Hang on.